Hey, Mr. Parker here to review a new one from Synapse Films. This is the Blu-ray of Daria Argentu. Uh, Gentoo's Tenebra, or Tenebra, uh, which means darkness. Uh, yeah, what can I say about a classic giallo like this? Uh, this one was actually made after Inferno. Uh, Suspiria and Inferno were made. They're two supernatural movies. Inferno didn't do so well, so Argentu kind of went back or was forced to go back and, to his giallo roots and do this movie. So this movie does actually feel a little angry. Uh, Tenebra is very much straightforward compared to his other films of the time. Uh, it's a story that a lot of people will be familiar with uh, if you're into giallos. An American artist, writer, uh, painter, whatever, goes to uh, a foreign country and uh, they witness or become t entangled in uh, murders. Or murders. Or mur a murder. That, that tends to happen in these movies. This time it's uh, Peter Neal, uh, who basically is on a book tour in uh, Italy and uh, an obsessed killer becomes crazed about him and his book so he starts targeting people and writing him and uh getting him involved with the murders uh enter tons of familiar faces in this movie john saxon uh I, ca I can't pronounce a lot of these people's names off the top of my head but uh there's a guy who's in tons of spaghetti westerns i recognize and uh the young uh kid in this movie is actually in House on the Edge of the Park, which is one of my favorite films. Uh, not to mention Dario Argento's wife's in this. So yeah, uh, Tina Burr has a star-studded cast with a good, uh, good uh, slew of characters as well. Uh, I actually really enjoyed Peter Neal in this movie. John Striner's in it as well as a creep. So yeah, uh, it basically follows the story of a lot of these giallo types, but it's really well made and it's made by one of the kings who's falling back on, uh, you know, a genre he feels safe in doing. And he knows it will do well, and he does precisely that. It's almost like uh, he's coming back with a vengeance in here. Uh, a lot of people on the uh, film Tina Burr have like kind of uh, dissected it a bit and thought that Argento was kind of poking fun at his detractors uh, because the film follows an author who is accused of being a misogynist, and people have accused Argento of being a misogynist. They uh, This is all addressed, actually, in a, a nice little giallo documentary on the disc that gets deep into, uh, you know, a lot of theories about this. It includes a lot of familiar faces, uh, you know, giallo experts, horror experts, uh, people like Richard Stanley, Dario Argento himself. It, this focuses on the rise and the fall of the giallo, uh, but mostly with a, a fine focus on Dario Argento himself considered to be the king but uh yeah regardless uh getting into the film again what i really like about uh tina bra it's always been one of my all-time favorites of uh, dario argentus and italian films in general is it it of course has a great score as always all these movies do it also has a, a very straightforward narrative compared to the other ones uh, a lot of times uh Especially in Argento movies, it can be confusing and different. And to see him go more straightforward, I thought was uh, kind of cool, to be honest. Uh, it's also gratuitously violent, and the violence in these films is always strangely beautiful. Lots of uh, white walls and white shirts and white clothing being uh, splashed with blood uh, shirts and whatnot. And uh, everything is like an art piece in these movies. And uh, uh, Tina Bra is definitely in, <laughs> definitely one of those movies. Uh, it has a lot of nice voyeur uh, point of view shots in the movie. It has a haunted past in here, uh, which actually was a ballsy move. In the haunted past, they use a trans actress, which I actually never knew uh, until a little bit ago, which uh, kind of blows my mind back they do in that 1980, 1981, 82, around that time. So yeah, Tina Burr has a lot of uh, interesting layers to it. Uh, it's well acted, it's well directed, it's well shot, lots of nice wide screens. It's in a great location. It has uh, uh, amazing amount of style. And uh, Synapse brings this movie to life. It looks pretty damn good. I had seen previous uh, uh, HD masters of this that, you know, not to say anything bad about a certain company, they usually do a great job, but I particularly did not like their HD master of it. This time it, it looked pretty good. But uh, yeah, there's a twist in Tina Bra that uh, I never guessed when I first saw it. And uh, I had watched this with people who had never saw it as well, and it was a delight to watch them realize who the killer was, and uh, it kind of just blew their mind. Um, there's also a great quote in here where Peter Neal quotes uh, Sir uh, Conan Doyle about, uh, what is it, when you've eliminated the uh, impossible, whatever improbable remains is probably the truth, or something along those lines, and it, it, it's a wonderful hint to the film, and uh, yeah, I would really suggest checking this one out. Uh, it's never boring, it's... Uh, it is very violent, uh, has a great cast, and uh, most of them get picked off in gratuitous, uh, elaborate, awesome ways. But yeah, 
Uh, this film also includes uh, uh, a couple trailers on here. The the release includes a couple trailers. Uh, like I said, it, it has an hour and a half uh, special feature. It, the interviews involve, like I said, directors and uh, you know collaborators and uh, you know experts on the subject. So that's really cool. And it also includes something really unique on here. They went ahead and they branched in the. Uh, rare American inserts or English inserts where the book is actually in English into the film uh, seamlessly so it looks really good not to mention the film has a commentary with another expert who dives deeper into the career of Argento uh, bringing all these layers up to the, the screen so you know I mean I'm into your attention that's why I really like uh, some of these releases they put out lately because they make me feel like I haven't wasted my life watching uh, weird bizarre films uh, there's actually like a, a huge art to it which I always felt there was but uh having these people justify the art to me is even better to be honest so yeah there's all these layers that are interesting about Argento and uh Richard Stanley's take on the whole thing is a, a really unique and cool way and uh you know what I, I pretty much I think I agree with him but yeah check this release out there'll be more information below uh it looks really good it was released on a steel book earlier so if you guys aren't familiar with Synapse you should be if you guys aren't familiar with Dario Argento you need to be and if you guys aren't familiar with Giallo's check out Tina Bra I think it's one of the most approachable ones in the genre and i think it's actually one of the better ones for sure uh i'm mr parker thank you very much for watching and have a good one I've read all your books, Mr. Neal. The book deals with a murder committed with an old-fashioned open razor, right? This girl, too, was killed with a razor, and your book's pages stuffed into her mouth. Can I ask you something? If someone is killed with a Smith & Wesson revolver, do you go and interview the president of Smith & Wesson? Peter, Peter, you can't let me down now. We're within two days of making a deal. Please, stay just until Friday. My life is in danger. There's no deal in the world worth risking my life for. Not anxiety or fear, but freedom. You wrote those words, page 46, freedom to strike again, Peter. Listen, don't hang up. We have to talk. You told me how, Peter Neal. You and me together. We've just begun. <laughs> Come on, hurry! Oh, yeah. You'll be okay. Oh. We've got to get out of here. The guy, the guy, guy has an axe. Could it be somebody I know? Damn. I wish I'd never written that book. You don't mean that. I've made charts. I've tried building a plot the same way you have. I've tried to figure it out, but... I just have this hunch that something is missing tiny piece of a jigsaw. Somebody who should be dead is alive, or somebody who should be alive is already dead. Explain that. You know, there's a sentence in a Conan Doyle book. When you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. Ah! Ah!